I'm trying to take me under to go from just to under. So I need you more than ever. Don't you feel you anymore? I'm trying to take me under to go from just to under. So I need you more than ever. Like a child who needs the father. Was a lost boy, was a wanderer. Looking real hard, I'm a ponderer. Didn't really know what time it was, but it always seemed to feel ominous. See, I felt I needed no one else. Autonomous, see, my life in my hands are almost fluid. Harmonica, see. I wanna be moving, but feeling, but feeling, but feeling like I'm running in place. I wanna feel safe. I hope that this grace here for the back spider for the sometimes I lack fire slash back by the deck. Act higher than I all hashtag past lies, even though that time passed. My mind still be a chastise, my mind need to be wrapped tighter. I be like, oh, easy on yourself, but not too easy, dog, cause that's bias. I wonder if I dealt with the same thing in the past life, cause I need help, I just don't act like it. Keep real. I wanna be moving, but feeling, but feeling, but feeling like I'm running in place. I know I'm awake, I know that we're great, yeah. It's a trial, you just gotta fight through it. That's why I like weed, I can read the Bible and just write to it. I'm not stupid. Mama's trying to Go. take me under. Go from just to under So I need you more than ever Don't you feel you anymore I'm always trying to take me One minute, under. one minute To go from just to under So I need you more than ever Like a child who needs the father Israel, rise and face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpet. Trumpet down. Heavenly Father, the God of our Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, we come to in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God, for sending your Son. Jesus, to die for us, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for another Sabbath. We thank you for the new moon. We thank you, Father God, for putting our spirit, for waking us up, Father God, for, for bringing us out of these filthy churches, those Christian churches, Father God. We thank you, Father God, as your spirit, Father God, is rising up over the earth, Father God, that you people all over the world, Father God, is repenting. Lord, we ask you, Father God, you continue to use the bishops, the deacons, the officers, the captains, to spread your gospel all over in the forefront of the earth, Father God. We pray for the healing of the nation of Israel, Father God, who are scattered in the forefront of the earth. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on your people, Father God, especially in these last days, Father God. Lord, it's getting harder and harder, I hear, Father God. We ask you, Father God, you provide for those who in need. We ask you, Father God, that you bless us financially. Whatever we may ask for, Father God, we ask you, Father God, that you provide it for us, Father God, especially in these last days. Lord, we pray for those who are sick in the midst of us, that you heal them swiftly and quickly, Father God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God, for hearing us, for always hearing us. Let the whole country say hallelujah. 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 Father God, as Bishop is about to bring his class, Father God, we pray, Father God, that one, he may touch one, Father God, one may repent, and he may change one of our lives. We thank you, Lord. He sent the name of you, Son Jesus Christ, to give you all praise or glory. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, and salute, salute down, face sisters, to the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Hey, Shalom family, Most High in Christ bless you all. Happy Sabbath, happy new moon. 
All right, good. Uh, so today's class is entitled The Sons of God versus the Serpent and the Ostrich. Damn, I'm telling you something. Well, really, I was, that was a good title, right? <laughs> yeah, today's class is entitled The Sons of God versus the Serpent and the Ostrich. Drop the ball. Well, hey, damn, all those ad libs in the background. Um, so last night I didn't have a title for a class. I'm sitting now with the bishop and deacons and um, the captains. And I was like, I need a title for a class. So I was going to, today was about Esau. I was, I said, let me talk about him. And then it just kind of morphed into uh, that rebellious woman. And I'm not talking about you ladies here. Right, ladies? Uh, yeah, that's right. I said, that's right. You ain't talking about me. Right. I'm not talking about you. And let me tell you something. Now, this is for the men. We are the most hated on this earth. We have so many battles we fight. The first battle we fight is within ourselves. Then we have to fight with the other nations because none of them like us. And then we have to fight with the woman. We're fighting on three different fronts. You all understand what I'm trying to say? And if you don't, I don't know what planet you live on, but over here, this is the battle. All life is a continual battle on all fronts. Sometimes we need a break, and the one break we can do, give ourselves, is within ourselves, battling ourselves, getting ourselves right. And then the next one we want, really, is the woman to give us an ease so we can put all our attention on that serpent. That's where all our energy needs to be focused on. It don't need to be home with the woman and within ourselves. We got to fix ourselves. You men understand that? So I saw some ra I saw some ratchet. I'm going to get to you woman. I saw a video this week of a woman with her child. And we're going to watch these videos later on. Guess what? I got videos today. Would you believe that? I got proof. Listen. I couldn't believe it. She, it was like about 8 o'clock at night. She had a baby in hand, two-year-old, ran, ran to the house, rang the doorbell, and left the baby, and left. And left the baby, the baby standing there, confused, didn't know where to go. And I'm like, damn. I thought it was a prank at first. No. She just tied her child. And she thought she was leaving with, with his father, but it happened to be that she went to the wrong house. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And that's what sp spawned this next part of the class when I said the ostrich. All right, so uh, we're going to begin. Class is entitled again, The Sons of God versus the Serpent and the Ostrich. Let's begin in the book of Genesis 1. Now, I pray, God, give me a tongue to bring forth edification to all people, and we learn to be better. Genesis 126. Who's reading for me? I am Bishop Wilson Ariel. All right, good. All praises. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So the first thing I'm going to deal with today is the sons of God. In verse 26, touch that again for me. Genesis 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. God said, let us make man in our image. Men, understand something. 
We are made in the express image of God, Christ, and the angels. You understand that? God made us in his image. Now, there's something very significant in that, is that for whatever reason, God said, I'm going to make man on the earth a specific man, but I want him to look like me. God, thank you. Imagine looking like these other names with their eyes and, oh, man. Skin, you see some of these, some of these Edomites, they be 30 years, they look wasted away. Radio, radioactive. He said, let us make man in our own image. Read on. After our likeness. After what? Our likeness. He said, I want you. He said, we're going to make man after how we look. We got a special man. That's the black man today. So-called Native American Indian, so-called Hispanic man. We are made in his image. I'm trying to explain to you, this is some of the vibration why the nations can't stand us. They hate how we look, but they want to look like us. You know what kind of mental stress that's on them to hate everything about us but want everything that we have? They're, they're struggling to the point they want to get skin cancer just to look a little bit like us. They'll put things in their lip. The white man wish he had your Johnson. Tell you want everything that you have. He wish he could run like you, jump like you, do everything like you, sing everything. Their whole life is a fake, cheap, Chinese copy of us. To the music, everything, they try to be us. You know why? Because God said, I'm going to make you in my image. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Lord, I could have came out looking like one of those mongrels. Hey. Read on. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And he says, what and what? And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. God said, I'm going to make you look like me in my image, and then you're going to have dominion, rulership over what? The fish of the sea. Read on. And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all earth. Over what? All the earth. God said, I'm going to make a man that looks like me in my image, and I'm going to give him rulership over everything on the earth. You understand what everything means? It means everything. Everything that he created, he said, you all will have dominion over it. So now, I'm trying to color the picture in, because now you're going to understand why we battle that serpent. Because he understands that we was made after his image, and he gave us dominion over him, and everything created. Hope you all following along, really paying attention to what I'm trying to express to you all. God said, you have dominion over everything. Everything. Man, who I made in my image, I gave you dominion over everything that I created. Read on. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So God created man in his own image. So God created man in his own image. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 3. We're going to come back here in a second. Wisdom of Solomon 3, verse 1. Now, our power, Yahweh, made us in his image. And look what he says. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, and verse 1. Surely, vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of God and could not out of the good things that are seen know him. That is, neither by considering the words did they acknowledge the workmaster, but, but deemed either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be gods which govern the world. Now, listen what he says. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of God and could not out of the good things that are seen meaning his creation, know him. That is, we are supposed to understand and know God just by the creations of the things that he made, that there is a power. How is there a sun, a moon, a star in the, in the, in the heavens? How is the sun burns and never goes out? 
How does it rotate around the earth and keep on coming back to its same place over and over again? How? We're supposed to know that there must be a God because of this. Read on. Verse 2. Verse 2. But deemed I the fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world. They, man, in his ignorance, would look at the creations of God like the sun, the moon, the stars, the air, and believe that that's God. Instead of understanding there is a God that made those things. But here's the point I want to get to. Verse 3. Verse 3. With, with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty hath created them. So it said, look, if you think those things that he created is beautiful, let them know how much better the Lord of them is. God is better than the creations he made. But here's what I'm trying to talk to you about. He made us in his image. We're made in his image. In his likeness. So if you black, dark, black, rich, dark-skinned black God, he made you in his image. If you have... <laughs> you know, Cap, if you was in Africa, you know you'd be light-skinned, right? Okay, I'm just letting you know now. Don't go beside yourself. No, you'd be light-skinned. They're a different type of black. Hey, you see that scripture and the bottom of that scripture mm -hmm. talking about the author, the first author of beauty. Mm -hmm. Your sisters, seriously, that verse right there, you should, you should tell that verse to your young daughters every day. I'm telling you, because a lot of us, we have that, our kids is, is we raising our kids with a low, low self-esteem. Now think about it. If you're telling you, you're telling you daughters, look in the mirror, keep telling yourself you're beautiful, and you was created by the first author of beauty. They were not putting no damn wigs, no eyelashes. Right. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's, that's a heavy verse. You, you guys should meditate on this right there. That's a heavy verse. Keep the camera on Malachi. I'm meditating right now, Malachi. And Malachi, you're beautiful. Pause. Oh, ha! God. <laughs> You made after his image. You're beautiful, Malachi. <laughs> All right, Bishop. Can you please move the camera now? Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. All praises. You made it. Right, it's still on. I'll tell you, camera, the cameraman got stuck. He's like, yeah, he is beautiful. He couldn't even move the camera. He couldn't move the camera. He couldn't move the camera. He's like, it's caught, caught up in his eye. <laughs> Y'all, stop playing with Malachi. Leave him alone. Uh, anyway, so let's read that verse again. Verse 3, with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took to them to be God. The, the sun is beautiful. It's magnificent in, it, in its creation that God made. But, and you look to it, it's beautiful. Read on. Let them know how much better the Lord of them is. He's much better than that. And we're made in his image, and his likeness. Read on. For the first author of beauty hath created them. That's the point where Malachi was making. The first author of beauty, which is God, said, you know what? Let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. And we're going to give him dominion, that man over everything that looks like me. God, thank you. You know why? Because you are the first author of beauty. So like you were saying, you are beautiful, ladies, made in the express image of us. Because you bone of my bone. And men, you men are beautiful. Because you are made after the likeness. We are made after the likeness of God. That's right. And that serpent can't stand at that pasty. I said, I'm going to do a little different. Let me stop. I got I to gotta ease my way into it. Just, I come up. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. I just find myself. Let me see. ease. Okay. Let's go back to, let's go to uh, Lamentations 4. We are made. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. You think I need some? You think I need some uh, Edomite? Hey, hey, real talk. Now I'm, I'm going. Just gonna go full throttle. Look at what Esau deems beautiful. Look at that face. Let me tell you some. Look at that. Look at that. Look how the sun bounced off of that skin. 
Come on, man. Look, look, I got give me goose pimp. Damn. Go ahead, sister. No weed right there. Yep. Well, I could take jabs out. You don't know me, but anyway, look what they deem beautiful. Some anorexic she be a bag on 84 pounds, six foot tall. You see all 13 of her ribs. They told my that's beautiful. Man, please, you joking. And a long back, long back. You got you got you got a Justin Bieber, Molly Cyrus shape. You can't from behind, you can't tell if it's Justin Bieber or Molly Cyrus. Please. Hey, hey let me tell you something, man. For your haters out there, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna make it clear to y'all. IUIC is pushing to, sh to show our people they mm -hmm. are beautiful, to show our people they are law or royal. We don't care about what you guys think. We don't care what you think. We really don't. Listen, give me the picture. Give me the picture where Bishop was in the horse, man. Yeah, yeah. Give me that. Oh, man. Because some hey, of you on. get Yo, mad uh, as hell. Go, go down, one down, all the way to the left <laughs> in the underwear. Oh no, oh, no, not that one. Over, over, over. Right, right, right. Go up, right there. Click on that one. Oh, God. <laughs> come, come on, man. Please. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Anybody got a barf bag, please? It looked like, it looked like two long elbows. <laughs> Look at you like gotta be joking. <laughs> you gotta be joking. Some no, show the, whole, the whole, show the whole picture. Like, what's wrong? You can't show the whole picture. Come on, man. All right, all right, all right. All right. Now, stop. Look at the back. Come on, man. Look uh, at that. Look at that ribs. It's please, a long ass please. back. Bam! Shoot that thing off, please. Go ahead. Hey, give me that picture, man. Give me. Let's see the picture. Take that picture. off. Give me, give me, give me the uh 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 royal picture, man. You gotta get that picture. I'm, I'm. You got it. Put it up, man. Whoa. I don't know what. I don't know what your arc. Uh, that's not. We didn't ask for that. What you do? What you doing? Bishop on a horse. Come on, man. Hold. Hold. There we yeah, go. right there. Put that up, man. Listen. Get Listen. Get mad if you want to. You can get mad if you want to. We don't give a damn. And we're going to continue pushing that. Because our people got to start seeing themselves in another light. That's right. And IUIC is going to continue pushing that. We don't give it them what you say. We don't give it them what you think. Oh, people are so broken that they can see this image and they cannot see nothing good about it. I, it, it just it marvels me that people will see this and find everything negative to say about it. Yeah, you live a sad life, but you know, some, all that does is fuel us to keep on going. They be thinking like they're going to say it and they're going to go, oh, yeah, man, please. You are not, you are so insignificant in this biggest part of this movement, man. We, listen, your stuff is playing child's game. That is, he is made in the express image of the likeness of God on earth. You can find something wrong with that. Man, please. We don't, whatever. Move on. So let's go back. Where we at? Uh, you went to, you asked for Lamentations. Lamentations chapter, four. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 1. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 1. How is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold. Comparable to what? Fine gold. The sons of Zion are comparable to fine gold. We're not talking about that slum gold we got today. We're comparable to the rarest of gold. Read on. How are they esteemed as earthen pitchers? How are they esteemed as earthen pitchers? Read on. The work of the hands of the potter. Stop right there. It's saying, now what happened to the sons of God that were at one time comparable to fine gold? But this gold became dim. And now we're like earthen potters, pitchers, like clay. We have lost all luster. We're going to come back to this chapter later on in the class. What happened to us that we no longer are seen like that? We have sinned against God, plain and simple. But 
as we go through the class, you're going to see, well, I don't want to say it. Just know we have sinned against God. That's why I said today, the black man, we, when I say the black man, I'm referring to all the tribes. So don't think I'm talking about just so-called Negroes. We are at the bottom of society anywhere in this world. We are looked at less. We are mocked, ridiculed, joked upon. Hey, real quick, can you, can you I, I, I don't know how it works with you all there on the IT. There's one that says the Dorito commercial. You all know what I'm talking about? Good, it says Dorito. I, I know I don't have no real rhyme or reason to how I do things. It's going to be always towards the bottom, I guess. Watch this, Dorito commercial. Watch this. I'm going to use this just for the disrespect. Oh, thank you. Have a seat. Kyle, Jalen, Jalen, Kyle. Jalen, you play nice. I'll be right back. What's going on, little man? I see you got your game skills down, Pac. You might have your hands full once I'll pick up the control a little bit. Put a bear. Keep your hands on my mama. Keep your hands on my Doritos. Jalen, are you playing nice? No, no. We're going to come back to this video later again. But look at the disrespect. And Esau's behind this. Oh, so many, I, there's so many layers behind it. One, it's a single mama. Where's the father for that child? This one. Then she dressed out of order. And then this man coming in, and you know what he's trying to do. He want to sex her. And then the boy smacks him in the face. No respect or no level for black, for old people. How do we become din? Do you think it was ever to be named, us the sons of God, that anybody would raise their hand to us, much less hit us? Man, not even a tongue would have wagged his tail or his tongue. Not even a dog would have wagged his tongue in our presence. We had demean over subdued everything. Every lion, every bear, every tiger, every shark, every whale, everything was in fear of us. Now you got a six-year-old bet smacking you. And it's comedy. How did we become dim that was once viewed as gold? Sirach 17. Imagine that. Sirach 17. Give me 17 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, Sirach and the Apocrypha, chapter 17, verse 1. The Lord created man of the earth and turned him into it again. Read. He gave them few days, a short time, and power also over the things therein. And he gave us power also of everything that's in. He gave us power over everything that's on the earth. That's all I want. I want power again. I want power. I'm supposed to rule. That is my nature. I'm made in his express image. I want power. I don't know what y'all want, but I know what I want. I want power. Read. He endued them with strength by themselves and made them according to his image. And in his image was strength with God. In his image. So you cannot be in the image of God and you be a simp. You cannot be in the image of God and you bashful. Right. Introvert. Right. We're to take lands, take crowns, snatch crowns. We are going to usurp authority on this earth over all nations with the power of God. Yes. Call me the usurper. I don't want them to give me nothing. I want to take it. I want to pry it out of their hands. It belonged to me. Unless you don't believe this Bible. I believe it. Read. Verse 4. And put the fear of man upon all flesh. And, we, and put the fear of man upon all flesh. We were the only one he considered man. 
everything else created, all other nations, all other animals are all beasts. Outside of, we are the only man, and you're the only woman from us. Everybody else are beasts or cattle. And put fear upon all flesh. So how do we become dim? And now we're not esteemed as nothing. We're getting smacked over a Dorito from a kid. If that was back then, that child would have been put to death. God would have put him to death. Most high put to death children that mock the prophets. Must have put their hand to them. Read. And gave him dominion over beasts and fowls. Read. They received the use of the five operations of the Lord. And in the sixth place, he imparted them understanding. And in the seventh, speech. An, interpret an interpreter of the cognitations thereof. Read. Counsel and a tongue and eyes and, and eyes, ears and a heart gave he them to understand. Read. With all he filled them with the knowledge of understanding. He showed them good and evil. He set his eyes upon their hearts that he might show them the greatness of his works. He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever, that they might declare his works with understanding. Who can, who can be the only people that do that? Us. We're the only one who can declare his works with understanding. We're the one, only ones that can open his Bible and understand to open his seals of revelations and explain it. We're the only ones that can show you what's happening in today's world, present time, and filter through the scriptures. We're the only ones that can explain who Christ came and died for and what the will of God is. Why? Because we're made in his image. And he imparted upon us that gift of understanding. That's why it's a desperate rush today to silence us. That's why we're at war with the serpent. Because he's worried. He's worried because we're coming back and it's not with guns, it's with the word of God. That's all we need is the word of God, and we will slay this dragon. Read on. Verse 10, and the elect shall praise his holy name. Read. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. He made an everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgments. Their eyes saw the majesty of his glory. And their ears heard his glorious voice. Read. And he said unto them. And he said what unto them? Beware of all unrighteousness. Stop. He said, I gave you all this. Everything I gave you, real quick. I created you and gave you dominion over everything. I gave you understanding. I gave you a law. But now I need you to beware. Read on. And he gave, and he said unto them, beware of all unrighteousness. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. And he gave us laws on how to conduct ourselves with our neighbors. The point was, he gave us dominion, and then he warned us and told us to beware. Did we beware? No. And that's how we became dim. The gold, comparable to fine gold, we became as earthen pitchers. Beware of all unrighteousness. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. So, uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 34. Watch this real quick. Ezekiel 34, uh, 31. Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 31. And ye, my flock... The flock of my pasture are men. Are what? Are men. The Bible says that the flock of God pasture, who he made in his image, in his likeness, are what? Are men. That's what the nations have to understand. That's what you women have to understand. God, the creator, the author of first beauty, the first author of beauty, said the flock of his pasture are men. 
That's who God is dealing with. God is dealing with us. And through us, we deal with the woman. And through the woman, the children. That's order. God said the flock of his pasture are men. Hey, sisters, I got a problem. I got a question for you ladies. You all got a problem with that? Okay, because if you do, you're going to die right here. You're going to die right here. You ain't coming out of here. You men got a problem with being the flock of his pasture? No, sir. Because if you're timid, you're going to die right here. You're not going to make it. God said the flock of his pasture are men made in his image. Go to Proverbs, Proverbs 8. I'm telling you, ladies, you're going to have to believe that. You're going to have to believe it. And the only way you know you believe that is your actions have to be indicative of what you say. Man, the only way you know you're going to believe that you're the flock of his pasture is when you, be when you behave as a man of God. Until then, you don't believe it. You're just saying you believe it. Proverbs 8, uh, 8 and 4. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of man. God said his voice is directed to the sons of man. I'm going to give them the... Why you think men... And I'm going to... This is for the ladies and men. But ladies, why do you think men have so much understanding in the word of God? When you hear the bishops... The bishop, yeah, I, was, I was teaching last week and I was stuck. I was like, damn. He was going through some stuff and I'm like, he, he made one point about that nigga window. And, the, and, I, and I just sat back when I was watching, I'm like, that was me. That was me. I'm like, but for him to be able to illustrate it, you know, everybody get what hits them. When it hit me, I'm like, if you don't understand after this man explained it, I don't know how you're going to understand the Bible because he make things plain. But the point is, you ever wonder, how is Bishop, the deacons, the captains, some of you officers I listen teach, able to illustrate and explain the Bible the way they do. Because God just said, verse 4 again, Unto you, O men, I call. I what? I call. God said, I call you men. Read on. And my voice is to the sons of men. And my voice, which is this word, is directed to you. I made you in my image, in my likeness, and I gave you dominion over everything. You are my mouthpiece on earth. Now that was queued up good. Who had their finger on that button like that? Because you must have been holding that this whole time because I don't know. That was good. He said, I lost my train of my thought. Damn it. We, God, thank you, Cap. God made us all mouthpiece on earth. Thank you, God. Your voice is in me. It's directed to me. And with your word is power. That's why we could do it, ladies. Because y'all can't do that. It ain't given to you. And that's just what it is. Should I be ashamed to say that? I don't care who don't like it. I'm made in his image. If you're offended, so what? Should I be ashamed? Should I be afraid to say what the Bible says? Nah, I'm a son of God. That's, right. That's what I am. And I'm going to say it, and I'm going to behave like it, and I'm going to mean it. Tell them I have dominion if I'm afraid to speak what the Bible say. Something I want to say. Y'all transgenders is crazy. Y'all Ray Lewis, I, this wasn't my class, but I just got to say this. Yo, I, I, these, people are, these people got some real mental issues, some serious I, I'm trying to find a word. Bishop, you mean transformers. 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 Yo, I'm telling you something. In my lifetime, I've heard so many different variations of uh, uh, um, bisexual, transsexual, demisexual, asexual, uh, some other, I don't know, huh? Astrosexual. You mean, that means you're, you're, you're out of space lesbian. Oh, I don't know what you call your stuff today. There's so many, so many terminals. You know, God called them Sodom. That's right. Abomination. I'm going to be ashamed to say that. Got this. I'm going to change the train of my thought, a class. But it just be amazing me. These dudes be 6'3". I saw, I saw a picture, I saw a video of 
Magic Johnson's son, Lord Ben. That's the, a, the that nigga, is a big sissy right there. The nigga should be a linebacker in the NBA running over quarterbacks. He's got a purse on his on his hip with some with some big ass shoulders. Oh no. <sighs> no. I'm glad I'm married. I in this generation. Listen to me. If I was if, if Just, I grew up listen, if I grew up in this generation, you you would listen to me. You would have to show me not no baby pictures. I want I, I need I need birth certificate, I need video when you came out your mother's womb at that moment. I want crotch shots. And on your on the day you was born, sure. Give me a crotch shot now. And let's no not, guy, I don't trust it. Let's not go past how far removed we are from the world because there's now linebackers in the NBA, according to Captain Emma Zaya. <laughs> help, help! I'm lost. Bring me speed. Bring me speed. There was there was something that oh, I missed. Oh, right? Cap, you missed it. There's something you I missed. Should. You missed it. <laughs> Magic Johnson's son. No, 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 no. I want to hear what you guys say. I want to laugh. Magic Johnson's son. You said should be a linebacker in the oh, NBA. Oh, in the NFL. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. NFL, NFL. You you know what I mean. The hell wrong with you? Hey, but you got you can't you got it. One thing you can say, it ain't no small. This go ahead, go ahead, right here, go ahead. He need to repent. I pray, I, I pray this brother repent. To go to why don't you go where fashion sits? Stop, 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 stop. Listen to me. Listen, it it is it it is a feat in itself to be that big and balance on that little thing on the back of your foot. How the hell do you do that? Listen to me. How does he, listen, he need to be in a circus. Go ahead. Lord Jesus, man. Yo, God gonna come judge this earth. You better repent. And I'm supposed to be afraid to say something wrong with that. No, I don't care. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. All right. That, okay, let's go back to class. That's a big, that's a big dude. That's a big sissy. And you can't tell me he just eating salads all day. Nah, Negro. You eating Philly cheesesteaks behind the, you know. Yeah, you, let me stop. Let me, let me go back to my class. Let me go back. Uh, Proverbs 8. Uh, um, uh, Revelations 21. Twenty one, give me that um verse three, and then jump on to seven. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. He, and says, he says the tabernacle is with who? Is with men. I, I mean, listen to me. Listen, I didn't write this book. All I'm going to do is apply what it says. God said the ta his tabernacle is with who? With men. With men. Now watch this. Some people, well, let's read on. Go ahead. And he will dwell with them. And he will dwell with them. So now I've heard people say, well, when it says men here, it's referring to mankind because you men like to um, make this all about you and, uh, you know, you're misogynistic. I've heard that before. So I pull this out. It doesn't mean that. Read on. And they shall be his people. And they, see, they is referring to man and woman. You just kind of say it's about you. Read on. And God himself shall be with them. And see, it's them. It's not about you. It's with the man and woman. Uh, jump on down to verse 7. And verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. My what? My son. My what? My son. That's what he's talking about, my son. So when he says in verse 3, three read again. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. So let me ask you a question. Who heard that? Okay, come on, man. We're reading the book. Who heard it? Dad, yeah, just answer it. Answer it. You heard it. But I'm to right here. Who heard it? Okay, who's the man? The, the specific man is saying this right now. John the Revelator. John the Baptist. Lord Jesus Christ. Most John the Revelator is the one that heard this. Right? Read again. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. John the Revelator heard a voice saying, The tabernacle is with who? With men. With men. Go back to Proverbs 8 and 4. We're going to come right back here. 
Proverbs 8 and verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is with the is to the sons of men. That's what he's saying there. He's saying the same thing. And my voice is to you. So he told John, personally, John, write down this image of Christ. Write down the red dragon. Write down the pale horse. Write down that my tabernacle is with men. Everybody understand that? God is saying, I got a direct link with you men. I'm dealing with you all different than anybody else. I love my other creations too right here to my women. But right now I'm talking to you. I'm directly linked to you. You're made after my image. That's why he was pissed with us for choosing something else. Because he said, I chose you and I made you after me. And then I gave your woman from your bone after you. And you want to listen to her? Me and you was dealing. Hell, she got in here and you go, so, nah, dude. You had a, we had a direct connect to him. I said to say, y'all better stop listening to these women. Now, what I mean by that is, sometimes when the sisters say it's right, but you know it's right if it's coming out the scripture. And then you better accept it, because that's God trying to talk to you. Sometimes brother be ignorant and don't want to hear what the woman is saying, and she's saying it's right, because you know, even if she don't give you the precept, if you know the precept, you better buy. Outside of that, how many decades have I been saying in my classes, I don't listen to my wife? How many times you heard me say that? As long as you've been a truth here, I don't listen. I don't listen to my, I'm telling y'all, it ain't no diss. I don't listen to her. I always be talking, I look right through her like, uh, what? Uh, I don't know. No, I don't. Now, when she says something that makes sense, I'm like, yeah, okay, what? Other than that, I'm like, babe, come on. Come on. All right, stop, 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 stop. We, by nature, by nature, we try to program when we explain things. That's how we are. Women are like that. Children are like that. They give you half the story or whatever. That's why I, I need very little. Just answer yes or no. No, no, no. Just answer yes or no. I'll, the rest, if I need more, I'll ask you more. I'll be sitting there hanging on her every word. <laughs> oh, God. Not me. Read verse 3 again. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and, and be God their God. God will be with them. The them is man. And it does not exclude the woman because she's going to be up under the man. If she righteous, if she right, she don't got no problem being up underneath. I don't got no problem being up underneath Christ. And you shouldn't be up underneath us because we made in his image. So there should be no problem. That's why, go to, go to Isaiah 4. Wasn't going to pull this, but we'll use this right now just to make a point. 4 and 1. Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. Which one man? The Son of God. That's what they're going to take hold of. Read on. Saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name. To take away our reproach. You understand in that day when judgment comes on this earth, seven women are going to cleave unto one man. That means you women outnumber us. And the reason you come, you're like, I don't need no food. I don't need no clothes. All I want to do is fall under your hedge. Because for some reason, God, you got God's voice and God is dealing with you. Let me fall underneath you that you could take away our reproach. Before judgment comes. You ladies paying attention? You're going to be looking for us. I'm telling you. Y'all don't got the plan. We got the plan. I'm telling you. God said we got the plan. So now you could do it your way and have your black women moment and die. Or you fall into the hedge of us and let us help you take away your approach. You know, we don't want no money. We just want to be up under you. Because for whatever reason, God is dealing with you. You know something? 
Some brothers, some men be timid to be talking like that. I ain't timid for what? I'm a son of God. You mean timid? I tear flesh. For what? And if you want to listen, so what? We need you in line so we can work on, so we can worry about this damn serpent. That's what we need. In line. Isaiah 32. Isaiah 32. Take away all reproach. This is what it's talking about. 32 and 2. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 2. And a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind. A man shall be a what? In hiding place from the wind. From judgment. From the wind. Read on. And, to, and a covert from the tempest. And a covert or a protection from all the judgment coming. Ladies, you better stop paying attention. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling you what the Bible's trying to tell you. We are going to be your hiding place. When all these problems come, you're going to want a man to lean on. A brother to turn to. Have a plan of action. Hey, you never notice when, it, when there's some kind of storm or happening. You know, everything's getting shut down. Winter storm. You know, in Atlanta when it be raining men. You know what I'm trying to say? When it's, <laughs> I could be so petty at times. <laughs> anyway, guess what? The woman, oh, you all in, in order. You all looking, you know, because uh, we don't, we're not asking you what to do. We're like, okay, let's grab this, move this over here. Let's come over here. Let's move this right here. Get this here. Even tabernacles, we know what we're doing. The rain coming down, you all sitting down in the tent with the kid. We, we, Making this and doing that. Without us, man, you're in trouble. Listen, women, I want you all to understand something, please. I'm trying to be clear. On this earth, we are the prize. You all ain't the prize. Right. I know, I know the world has taught you differently, and you find a man to get on his knee and hang your ring. Not me. You better get on your knee and hang me a ring. I am, I am the prize. I am the prize. You ladies can clap. Sorry, you bro. Clap. You can clap. clap for no, okay. no, no. Man, you don't clap. You ladies clap. I want to hear you clap. I want to hear all you. Come on. I am the prize. We are the prize. That's what I want to hear. We are the prize. See, ladies, when you like that with us, we love you. And we'll do right for you. And we'll protect you. Well, we, we, it's a new narrative on the earth. Yeah. No, come on. Come here. Come here. Hey, even for your marriages on your wedding days. The sisters should be up here waiting on the prize. Not the other way around. You see, in ancient times, well, I'm going to digress. I'm going to my class going someplace else. But yes, the point, and there's no shame in that. There's nothing wrong with that when we righteous men. I ain't talking about these shiftless Negroes out here. I ain't talking about them. I'm talking about the sons of God. Hell coddling behind no woman. You crazy? That's not what God made me for. I'm your covert. I'm your protection from the storm coming on this earth. I'm about to go. Go ahead. Go get some. Bishop, can we uh, play a video? Yeah, I know, yeah come on. Uh, Elisha, play what I just sent you. Malachi, what's up? You got to ch charge my battery, man. You sitting back like... Yeah, you, Elisha, you see what I sent you? Where is it at? Okay, I'm going to send it. Damn, I thought I sent it to you. I'm going to send it to the online. Y'all got to see this thing, uh, how far we've fallen, man. Where black to, men... I'm about to get upset. <laughs> black men don't know, don't care about their nationality, their gender. They don't care about nothing at all, man. We've fallen very, very low, y'all. Let's play the video. Yeah, that's it right there. Put that on the screen. How do you define classic? First pair of kicks, you did it. Comfortable is definitely classic. Everybody's down with it. Timeless, just authentic. We are the new classics. Yo. So that's Dwayne Wade's son, Zion Wade, with a full weave, doing his little girly, uh, um, effeminate behaviors and stuff like that. That's how, that's, that's supposed to be a son of God, y'all. All of us should be angry about what we just saw on that screen right there. I am so glad I'm not born in this generation. Yo, y'all, 
You young, you young. Thank the Lord. Thank, give the Lord a half for that. I was born, I was born back in the sixties. I feel sorry for you young, you young ones, you young brothers, man. Yo, y'all, y'all tell you, I don't know. Yeah, yeah they met. Y'all yeah, don't know what y'all getting. It's pot luck out there. You know, you know, you know this nigga's going to turn us to be six eight, <laughs> two two seventy five. Just like Magic Johnson's son. Same up, thing. Same thing's gonna, thing gonna happen with him. You gonna wake up one day, next is abomination, and you gonna wake up and you gonna hear him peeing, and that stream gonna be far from the toilet. <laughs> Pee sounds like it's traveling a long distance. <laughs> anyway, um, ah, right, let's drop that. All right, let's let's deal with the serpent now. So I'm back. Okay, I hope you men kind of got something in you that you understand how great you are. And I hope you sisters can really respect that because God made us like that. There's nothing nobody can do about it. That's what God wants. You men understand that? What we're trying to do is change the way we think, change the ideology on the earth. That's why Bishop came in on a horse to see ourselves in that way in in great esteem. All of us are made in his image. We're all supposed to think and be like that. And aspire to be like that. And our women are supposed to cheer us on so we can go out there and fight the real enemy because you all ain't our enemies. You only become our enemies when you're against what the Bible says. And then we got to divert our attention and then we're going to play whack-a-mole. That's what we play. Crack! Not physically, please. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about spiritually. All right, Revelation 12, the serpent. Revelations 12. Oh, whoa, 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 Before I go there, there's something I want to see. Back on me. What's this? Watch this. Watch this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk. Hey, I want to ask your brother. Well, I got a question, right? A couple of weeks ago, I talked to a couple of brothers here about they've been sitting here for a minute. They ain't no soldier. They've been in regular clothes for a minute. Me, personally, I have a problem with that. I know some, some of you might not have a problem with that, but I have a problem with that. But my, my question is this, right? And a lot of, that, a lot of those brothers that I talked to who have been sitting here for years with regular clothes on, they're married. So the question I had, did your wives ever say, hey, ever, did you have ever questioned you about that? Because your sisters, that's what they should be saying. If your husband's sitting here for a while and you notice his regular clothes on and you notice other brothers who come in, go past them, become soldier, become officer, and they're still sitting here, your sister should have a problem, big problem with that. Your sister should have a problem with that. So I'm looking at this, I'm like, wait a minute. Bro, you've been sitting here for this many years, three years, four years, and you got other young men who just come in. Now they become soldiers. They become officers. I'm like, so what I'm saying is your sisters, you should en- encourage your husband. When you see somebody, you should encourage your husband. Hey, what is it that you're doing wrong? How can I help? There you go. How can I help you become a soldier? How can I help you become an officer? In other words, you're supposed to be his put- supportive system. Because I'm telling you, He's sitting here, he didn't do nothing because your sisters also see, don't see nothing wrong with it. You should look at it and say, hey, you should be proud when your husband becomes a soldier. You should be proud when your husband becomes an officer. And you should, you should let them know. You should let these brothers know. You'll you, you be surprised how a little push, how far a little push can get a man. You'll be surprised. You know something? Didn't you say that, Deacon? And it's for you, brothers and sisters. Just listen to the subtility. If you ever hear a couple, husband and wife, and when people talk about them, they always refer to the wife first, so-and-so, and brother so-and-so. They're like, okay. i am tell you something. Over the years, I've seen that. We're like, why is the wife's name always the first one? And not that they're talking bad about them, but she's the lead. That's like me saying... Um, Adelaide and uh, Captain Amaziah. And that's always, and that, it's like, y'all never noticed that who've been around long enough? Y'all never seen it like that? You'd be like, Smack, damn. I, I heard it once, I heard it twice. Like, the, I can never imagine in my house, 
I'm, my name is second to be named behind my wife. You crazy? You, listen, my personality. Nah, that's nah. Bishop. We got that in Atlanta right now. Yeah, I tell you, I yes, know it. I've seen it. We got it right now, Bishop. I be. Let me, sometimes I hear it. I know sometimes it's maybe the conversation piece. It's why. But after when I hear it three, four, five times, I'm like, ah, nah. Okay, I know he. He don't. And p- people do that, and not even knowing they're doing it. It's be, right. it's a subconscious thing that everybody so know that she has a stronger spirit than he does. That he that it, that it comes out. She becomes the lead. I've seen brothers before say, yo, this is a captain. His, they call his wife a captain. Damn. And they call him a brother. I'm telling you. I've seen before. It's a joke. But I'd be like, I'd never be joking my house. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, go ahead and say something. Your, do your sisters understand? I know how oh, I'm going to have some backlash on this one. Your sisters understand nobody know who you are without your husband? Do your sisters understand? Nobody in Israel know who you are if your husband was not in that position. I'm just telling you straight. That's it. Other sisters come to you for counsel because of you husband. Make no mistake about it. Nobody know you. I'm, th- I'm, just, I'm just being honest with you. But your husband, you know why they know your husband? Your husband been putting work for years. He go to the soldier. He go to officer of 10, officer of 20, officer of 50, uh, 80, 90. Now he's a captain, deacon, bishop. That's the only reason they know who you are. Because of that man, because of that husband. So guess what? If I were you, I pushed him to be more than he is. It benefits, it bene- it benefits, benefits you. you. It benefits you. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, watch this real quick. Revelations 2. What, you have one thing you want to put up? Right, let, me, let me get through this, please. I'm already an hour and I didn't get started yet. Right, Revelations 12 and 9. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, mm-hmm. which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, so it says, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. So what I want out of that is that great dragon is also referred to as that old serpent. Real quick. Let's jump back to Genesis. Oh, you know, let me read Revelation 12 and 3 first, and I'll come back. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Okay, that red dragon is back in verse 9, that great dragon. So just put this together. The red dragon is the great dragon, is that old serpent. They're all the same. Now we're going to identify, because remember, today's class is entitled The Sons of God versus the Serpent and the Ostrich. Right? Yeah, that. Okay, said it right. So now we're going to try to figure out who is this serpent, which is the red dragon, which is the old, I mean the old serpent, which is the great dragon. Let's go real quick to uh, Job. Job chapter 30 verse 29. Look what Job says. Job chapter 30 and verse 29. I am a brother to dragon. He said what? I am a brother to to dragons. He said, I am a brother to dragons. You could drop that. That's all I need. He said, I am a brother to dragons. Genesis 25. Start with verse 23. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. So now we know out of the two twins, one of them came out red. That means everybody was people of color. But this one had a distinctive look. He was red and he was hairy all over. This red man that was birthed on the earth is that same red 
dragon that we're reading about in the book of Revelations. There's a reason why God worded like that, where he used those small little subtleties so the sons of God hears his voice and can explain it. No nations is doing that, explaining that. None of them understand that, but we understand that. Now, what's the significance in it? I'm not going to get to read all of it today here, but I want to tell you that when that red man was born and lost his birthright, he was, he was forever, forever perpetually our enemy. He always hated us. Do you understand that? You're never going to get him to like you. And I'm cool with that. You know why? Because I'm made in God's image. That I ain't nothing better to be. Like, listen, honestly, I have no problem right now being at the bottom of this earth right now. Because it's only up from here. I don't want nothing in this world. I want this thing to go up. I want bricks and I want Ukraine and I want Israel and I want China and I want everybody to be in one big tumult. And only with my eyes, Lord, if of your mercy, I can sit back and watch this implode. Good. What happened? What, what do I got to lose here? Nothing is here is mine. Burn this whole thing up. Fire it all up. Well, I, I don't come back to Riverdale? <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. We ain't missing nothing. People think this world, let's get back to this, this thing. Um, so what was I saying before? I got uh, the red. Oh, let's go back to Genesis. Genesis, man, I'm sorry. So that red dragon is that red child that was born, which is Esau, the white man. So let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 3, and I want verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Remember that old serpent we read about in Revelation 12? Here we go. We're putting them all together. Now that serpent, this is that same spirit that's on Esau today, was what? Was more subtle than any beast of the field. He was more subtle. He was smarter than any of the other nations in this world. Read on. Field which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So now look, I want you brothers to help me out. Satan now, the spirit that's on Esau today, that red man, that old serpent, that red dragon, went to the woman and said to her, yea, he says, uh, he says, and God... God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree that is in the garden? I don't want to make this a class, but the trees, all this is a metaphor, an allegory. The trees are referring to the other nations, another class of the time. You can go on IUIC TV, find the classes and explain all these things. For us that's been here, we know if the trees are not, is referring to man. Everybody on that page? Who doesn't know that here? Good. Whoever that listen, raise your hand. Who doesn't know? Okay. I want you officers turn around, look at them. Later after class, give them the precepts, explain it to them. All right, so they understand. We're not making up this night church. So the Satan, the devil, the spirit on Esau, went to the woman and said, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit. Of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So that's talking about going into idolatry again. You men explain, take them, explain the scriptures to them afterwards. It's going to spiritual fornication. So, the, so what the spirit of Satan was doing was trying to get Eve to serve other gods. And she bit up. People in the church talking about the fruit was an apple. That's not scriptural. That's all made up nonsense. So Satan was trying to move the woman away from serving God. But was it really about the woman? 
What was Satan planned? Why did Satan, why did Satan go after the woman? What was his purpose? To get to who? To get to Adam. She ate the prize. She was of man. His plan was to get to Adam. Why? My question is why? Yeah, right here. Yeah, I'm sorry, right here. You can just talk loud. Okay, right, because God is dealing with the men. Watch this. Uh, who, who wants to try some? Go ahead. R he ruled the earth. And what did God tell Adam? I, when Adam, okay, now I'm going to give you the answer sideways. When God made man in his own image, right? And he gave him Eve for a wife. For what purpose? Somebody else. Dad, right there with the glasses on. For, there we go. For reproduction. Watch this. Jump back one chapter. Chapter 1, verse 27. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Read on. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And what? And subdue it. And subdue it. This was the commandment he gave Adam. Take a wife. Make babies. Make more like you, Adam. I want a lot of you. Because a lot of you is going to be in my image. And make them and subdue the earth. Make sure you keep everything under your dominion. That's certain Satan, that devil Esau understood that. And said, I got to cause a division between this man and woman. I got to break up that, that bond. Because as long as the man and woman are together in order and she's listening to him, they will produce more godly people like them. We have to destroy that union. So now the battle is what? We got to battle the serpent. Now we got to battle you. Now we need you in order with us. We lead you follow. We speak you listen. We say you do. And guess what? We'll fix all problems. So read that verse again. Verse 28. Genesis chapter 2, verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Make babies. Read on. And replenish the earth, and subdue it. And subdue it. Give me Psalms 47 and 3. And subdue it. Psalm chapter 47 and verse 3. He shall subdue the people under us. He said what? He shall subdue the people under us. God will subdue the people under us. And the nations on our feet. And what? And the nations under our feet. And the nations are going to be under our feet. That's why I told you, I want my foot on their neck. He said, and read it from the top again. He shall subdue the people under us. And the nations under our feet. And the nations will be under our feet. He said, this is what I need you to do, Adam. I gave you, I gave you a woman. I need you to go out there and make babies. Replenish this earth. Fill it up with people that look just like you. And then you know what? You're going to subdue. All of you are going to go out and subdue this whole earth. And keep all these other people in check. They understood that. And that's why today... To this day, keep the black family in disorder. Give this black woman a sense of entitlement that thinks, she, that thinks she has something to say. And see, when we talk like this, people that don't understand from the church, they're like, oh, these guys are misogynistic. Guess what? Don't care what you like, think, first of all. You know, but 
more importantly, we're not, we're not misogynistic. And if any of you men are abusive in your house, God's going to judge you. But we're not asking for nothing. We're taking our place. Or beat your feet, I'll get another one. I could plant my seed in another woman. I don't need you. I'm the value. Remove me from the picture. Your whole thing fall apart, baby. I'm your source. I'm your covert. You better put some respect on it. Or I'll find another. Next. You may put too much value. They got, some, they got nothing to say unless you decide you want to hear them. Be swift to hear, slow to speak. Ask. Remember, remember David's wife came to see him. She, she came bowing to ask permission to speak. God's like, well, you don't hear me out. That's why I don't hear you out. You think this is a talk show? I'll be playing. Yeah, been bring empowerment. Let's set up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, 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 let's say America has messed this black woman's mind up. Like, they got something to say. You don't got nothing to say unless I tell you. You chose me, right? You chose me for your husband. You let me between your knees, right? Then listen, damn it. So, so you give your backside and you don't want to listen. So you're just a big mouth slut. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, go back. Let me, I lost my train of thought. Psalm 47, uh, verse 3. Ah, uh, that's oh, good. I don't want to Genesis. Yes, yeah, go back. Verse 28, one more time. Let's, let's knock this down. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And have dominion over every moving thing that is upon the earth. Watch this. Go to Genesis back to 2. I want verse 18. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. I'm sorry. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. A help Meet or right for him. She is made, she is tailored specifically for each one of us. The woman you took is supposed to be there as your help meet. Read on. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Whoa, we named everything. Read on. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to all and to, I'm sorry, and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found any help meet for him. And out of all the women that was on the earth back then of these other nations, there was no woman that was right for him. You know why there was no woman that was right for him? Because God made Adam in his image, in his likeness. So out of all the women there that was made on the earth from all these other nations, there was none that was right for Adam. The only one right for Adam would have to come from where? From Adam. Because you wouldn't have found him nowhere else. And now God wasn't going to go create another woman. He's going to create a woman from man. Because I made you in my image, so you're going to come out of him. And you're going to be meet and right for him. That's why we don't choose these other nation women. I don't care what they look like. They are beasts. I'd rather struggle with the black woman than take these other nations now. Sleeping with the enemy. You understand that, man? Because you have some black men that say, nah, I don't want to deal with black women mouth or whatever. Because, you know, I, I go get me. Nah. Listen, they want, they, want to be, they want to be out of order, and you take her, then you better tame her. You better be strong to know you can use the word of God to subdue her. And if you can't, you took her too quick, and now you got problems. Shame on you, dummy. And you took her for. Took her, you can't control her. Before you pull out... 
before you sleep with her, you better learn her. Lest you, lest, lest, lest you spill your holy seed in an unworthy womb to bear your children. That sperm come out of you is made in the likeness of God. That thing is gold. Hell, you dealing with whores and dudes be buying prostitutes. Yeah, choose women, man, please. The wizard boy, you line them up. Let me see which one I'm going to choose out of you. Which one of you are worthy of me? And pick. Y'all understand that? Y'all be reckless with your penis. Sticking all kind of players. You'd be a bunch of baby daddies and baby mamas. And, you know, just, you, got, you got 14 kids with 18 women and all kind of crap. You can't figure out paying child support. With well, that dysfunction, got to stop. That got dysfunction got to stop. Sisters be, should be throwing it at you, trying to prove to you she's worthy of you. I could cook, I could clean, I could sew, I could this, I can that. She trying, she got a got a bouncer bouncing on, on a ball for you, trying to do I I do tricks, all kind of stuff for you, trying to prove to you that you're worthy of it. You guys got to be tricking your money. That's why these men stupid. They be in that strip club throwing money at these whores. Oh, sweaty ass dollar bill in her titty, and you guys be, oh, God, you niggas nasty. <laughs> you got some freaking nasty. Oh, read on. Who does that? Yeah. Verse 21. Sucking some old sweaty breasts with a, with a, with a tattoo of, a, of an old lion on it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Read on. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs. And closed up the flesh instead thereof. He couldn't find nothing that was worthy other than taking out of his own bone and reproducing. So women, you come from man. Man don't come from woman. You understand what I mean that because we are birthed from women. We'll get to that later on. But you understand what I'm making, right? We are the value. We are the source of their lives. Y'all don't believe that. Look at these men. Oh, gosh, boy. Ladies, you understand that? They understand better than men do. You understand that women come from you? Yes, you are the source of their life? Yes, sir. They are bone of your bone. Let's read it. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And that's where we go back. A help meet right for him. Fashioned for him. We have to rewrite this narrative on the earth. We have to be able to rewrite it so we can put our tensions on the real problem. And the first thing is understanding in the creation what we were created for, what was a woman created for, and what is the ultimate goal of us to replenish the earth. That's why they're worried right now. Too many of us is coming back to who we are. Too many of us is repenting. They, can't, they don't know how to stop this now. What to do. How do you deal with these people? Now these people are having children that's having children's. They're coming up in the laws of God. She was metastasizing and they don't know what to do about it. All praises to the Most High God. All praises. So Esau understood. Remember back in, um, he was more subtle. Read verse 1 again, of, of chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree of, I'm sorry, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it. The Lord not did, the Lord did, I'm sorry, the Lord did not want us dealing with the other nations and dealing with their ideologies, all right? Jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So now, she ate the fruit, and she brought it to Adam. And he says, 
Lord went to her and said, listen, what have you done? She said, the serpent beguiled me. The serpent beguiled her and made her believe what? We've been through this before. Only one hand, two hands. I got the same two hands. No, right there. Go ahead, officer. Right. That she could be equal to man. Go back in chapter 3. Um, verse 5. Chapter, Genesis chapter verse, 3. Verse 4. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as God. You shall be as a God because, remember, we were called gods on earth. Satan was tempting her and telling her that you could be equal to man. And that's why we battle today with the woman. Because she believes she's equal. In some cases, she thinks she's over man. Real quick, I want you to do me a favor on that. Uh, bl uh, black women, uh, next topic on podcast. Pull that up real quick. She thought she could be equal to man. She, Satan gave her a little play, and today they do the same thing. America's pushing that, and y'all falling for it. What's, what's this? I'm sorry, man. Some, some black people are stupid as hell. Let's watch. Go back. You got to turn on the sound. And why you think the men are better than women. That's wow. Do you have anything so, to say to that? You seem really mad. I'm not mad. I just don't understand why you think the men are better than women. That's wow. Just no. women. At what point did I ever say men are better than women? I mean, just the way you're speaking, you do think that men are better than women. The problem is that you're interpreting what I'm saying through your feelings versus logic. I simply said that women don't have the same biological time clock that men do. That does not okay. mean that one gender is better than the other. Okay. Next topic. No, no, no. There, we don't need to move the topic. Next aside. topic. No, 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 no. We're not going to know mm -hmm. the next topic. How did you come to that conclusion? Next topic. How did you come to that conclusion? Next topic. Whose show do you think you are on? My show. Get the fuck off the show, bro. Get the fuck out of here. You're not going to disrespect the platform like that. <laughs> But you understand, <laughs> you understand something. She's, she's, she's a guest on the show. They're having a simple conversation. But because she is smitten with madness, she processes in her mind whatever he's saying that men are better. He said, I'm not trying to say that. I said, just all biological locks are different, which is true. We can have kids, men can have babies in their 70s. Women don't, typically don't have that. That's all the points being made. She's dismissing him on his own show. It's the next topic. What you, and she said, and he says, who shows this? She said, my show. Damn. Get the feet your feet. I'm telling you something, man, brothers. It doesn't, let me tell you something. Proverbs 31 woman. Give me that real, Proverbs 31 real quick. Give me the beginning of it. 31 and 1. <laughs> 31 and 1. Proverbs chapter 31. If, I'm sorry. What part? 31 and 1. 1, I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son? What and what the son of my womb? And what the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto the woman. Unto wait, women. Wait a second. This is a woman telling her son, "Don't give your strength to no woman." So this ain't no man's point of view. This is a mama telling her son, "Don't you ever give your strength unto no woman." Read on. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Go give your strength unto a woman; it will destroy you. you look, oh, look at that big old. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to say back to it, that young girl is entitled because she's a pregnant, she's an attractive woman, and she's been appeased to so much and catered to that she feels she can say anything because that's what her reality is. It's distorted, and she's telling the man on his show to invite her on, this is my show. She's so ignorant she can't see that. I would say, I don't, I don't, I don't want to read Proverbs 31 because in Proverbs 31, they do talk about the value of a woman. Women do have value. 
It ain't like no woman don't have no value, but they ain't more valuable than me. I could tell you that much. Play it. They ain't more. They, they ain't no more valuable than me. I'm not gonna. Be, I, ain't, I ain't gonna put my get my wisdom to no woman. You listen in the scheme of thing. I'm more important. That's just what it is. Hey, Officer Alicia, um, play that video. Uh, at three fifty four. Play three fifty four. Uh, Deacon Isaac said this goes good with uh what Bishop is bringing out right now. Play that. Times in the barbershop. In the online, it says when you text him at 1024 a.m. and he ain't responded by 1026. Play that one right there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that one right there. Why he be tripping sometimes? Why he be what? Nope. Turn it up, turn it up. No. Turn it up and go back. Can you, can you call me your phone? Turn, yeah. Pause it. Turn up, this, turn up the volume so everybody can hear it. Why he be tripping sometimes? Why he be what? No. No. You ain't seen me calling your phone? No. Yeah, yeah. Why the fuck you acting crazy? Like Don't why the fuck nothing. You ain't seen me calling your phone? No, listen. Call me. I'm in the barbershop. And you Don't call me, Doug. You want me to embarrass you in front of everybody? Oh, my God, my nigga. I'm getting my hair cut. Oh, Am I getting my hair cut? Oh, you're not getting my hair cut. I dare you. Oh, you're God, what? Why are you doing this? Matter of fact, talk to me outside. I'm, let me finish getting my no, hair cut. No, no, no. Talk to me outside. She said, you done, bro. Come outside, bro. That's supposed to be a son of God, y'all. <laughs> yo, I'm telling you. Yo. Is it yeah. New York? Oh, without a doubt. That's, that's New York. That's, listen. Shout out to New York. <laughs> I, I'm not from this world, man. I'm really not from this world. Oh, you know, when I watch it, all I could do, I, in my mind, when I'm watching it, I'm trying to envision myself sitting in that chair. Like, I, I can't compute. That doesn't that doesn't register for me. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't ha I don't know no woman like that. My wife like, I, and I'm definitely not like that. You think the narrative you to see me getting up walking by man, please. Oh boy, I tell you, we got a lot of work. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Go back to let's finish. I gotta get through this stuff. Uh, Genesis um, uh, three thirteen. Genesis 3.13? Where? Genesis 3.13, sorry. Genesis chapter 3, verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And she said, The serpent, or that spirit of Esau, beguiled me, and I did eat. I partook. I listened to him. He made me believe that I can be equal to to the God that you created, God, and I entertained him. And that's what the white man is doing to many of you women today. Making you believe that you are as valuable, if not more valuable, than the men. And some of you men facilitate that chasing behind these women. Y'all be on the club buying these drinks, spending all this money in hopes she'll give you a phone number. Man, stay thirsty. I'm not buying you jack. I'm not buying you nothing. I'm investing no lick into you. I ain't investing nothing into you. Investing by me. Nah, I'll go home alone. I'll care. I'll find some. I'm not you do it. For, for, what's your name? Yo, give me a drink and I'll tell you my name. You, you guys have got to be crazy. Man, please. You die of thirst out there. Buy, yeah, buy my girl a drink. You got, you got, you got buy, buy a rock. Yeah, my name is Gertrude. You lying to your dumb ass. Verse, dump on down to verse 16. Verse 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy, con and thy conception, and in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Look what God had to come back and tell her. Listen, thy desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. She was bone of his bone. He had dominion of all flesh on the earth. God has said, hey, listen, woman, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Your desire is going to be unto your husband, and he got to rule over you. Not no next man, not nobody else. That man rules over you. Do you understand why you was created? You was created to be a help meet for him? 
Guess what? Did she understand? Did the woman understand that back then? 1 Corinthians 11, verse 8. All the way to the New Testament now. All the way to the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Damn, we went from Genesis all the way to Corinthians, thousand years later, and have to repeat the same thing again? Why is that? Go ahead, touch it. Let me start at verse 7, Bishop. Go ahead. Go to verse 7. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. Bring it out. But the woman is the glory of the man. That's it. We are the glory of God and the woman. You are our glory. That's what God created. But what struck me when I read this is, damn, that was back in the creation. Day one, two, three, four, five, the beginning of the, everything. And now we all we over here, and we still haven't had that conversation. Guess what? We in Riverdale still having that conversation. Why? Because we've been fighting this woman since then. It's been a battle. It's us against the serpent and against the ostrich. Still fighting that damn woman. Yeah. When you look That's at, a long battle, man. When you look at this right here, the woman in the current church was acting up. Paul had to remind them. That's what Paul put there. He Paul had to remind the sisters that was in that was in Corinth that the order. So the reason I brought that out is some of you thinking that. The sisters just start bugging out right now. No, they were bu they were still bugging out back then in the church of Corinth. That's what Paul had to remind them. Hey, listen, that's the order. We got, got you guys barely follow that order. Watch it. Read on. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Plain and simple English, but it's repetitive. It's repetitive because listen. In other words. If we don't figure this out now, ladies, if you don't figure, you will not make it. If you have problem, if even if you secretly under your breath have problem with serving the man that you let between your knees. If you got a problem with authoritativeship from man, the kingdom's not yours. God will remove you and give us brand new ones. Now, personally, I'm all right with the one I have, if she all right with me. But and, and if she's not, we scratch and get something else. Give me a new model. Update. I make some more. No, not yeah. Hope you ladies understand. I take my, I'm out, and I ain't gonna be crying. I ain't wearing whatever. I'm nope. I'm a son of God. I'm made in his image. I, I am the prize. Y'all believe that, man? Yes, sir. I hope so. I am the prize. What is this? For, uh, Psalms 82. This whole world is upside down, inside out. This crazy is out of course. Give me that Psalms 82 and 5. I'm Psalm. Get read. Psalm chapter 82 and verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. This whole world is out of course. Everything is upside down. In this world, the woman, is the woman got control. And they fool you to be you have control. I heard, I saw an article, a, a, a clip the other day. They were saying, if it wasn't for welfare, there'd be more deadbeat mothers than men. You women are entitled. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Be I said that. Wait a second. Wait a second. I put something here. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? I want woman celebrates divorce. Yeah, watch this. Read on. Read that again for me. Psalms 82, verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Out of course. Watch this. Give me that woman celebrates uh, divorce. Watch this. Oh my god, I'm officially divorced! Yes! Oh my god! Look at your brother. 
You was just talking about this. Yeah, you feel me? I'm officially primary custodian of the kids. What about the child support? That's it? Tony, that's crazy. Why? Are you kidding me? That all of this financial burden with my children is on me? What? This is not fair. Financially, the kids are my responsibility. I have primary custody of them. Damn. I'm officially divorced. Okay. But so far, I doesn't have to pay anything. Oh my God. Yo, I'm telling you, what's wrong with these women? She, listen to me. Now, I don't know her backstory. Maybe, you no, know, the marriage wasn't good. I'm talking, they're in the world, so they don't keep the commandments. And she needed out. But she was happy. She's out. Well, I'm happy for you, too. You going, okay, whatever. Ta who, who in the world chairs at a divorce? Wouldn't you be, man, I failed. Especially we had children, and we failed as a, we failed as a couple, man. And we failed. You know, I'm be a single mom, and I, you know, she's cheering, and it was all, and she said, and I got custody of the children, like, that don't got shit, I got, and then when she found out the money wasn't going to be right, now she's, now she's, oh, I can't believe it, I, I, if the financial burden falls on me, yes, itch, yes, Yes, itch. All of it falls on you. Yes. But I'm telling the mentality. You know, I've been, and some of you men will see that same woman and you go right behind her and try to bag her. Yep. And bag her because she got big breasts and she light skin. You all want, man, I wouldn't piss on her. I wouldn't piss on that woman right there. Nah. That is a drag. What you got, D? It, it, it's only... In our, cust in our community, in our culture, where you see people celebrate single black, single black woman, I mean, with, a bit, with kids. That's retarded. That's retarded. You don't see the Chinese doing it. The white woman don't do it. The our women don't do it. It's only us who think that there's a prize for being a single mother with no husband. It's only us who celebrate stuff like that. Why? Just this function. is our low, yes. We've been destroyed. It's 2023 and we still celebrating that garbage. And you know what? Esau, that Satan, that devil, that old serpent, he put that on TV for you to watch, to entertain you, and slowly acclimate your mind to think it's all right. That's his game, to think it's all right. Little girls see that and they celebrate being happy for, for a failed marriage. There's no winner, there's no losers. I mean, there's, there's no winners, they're all losers. Everybody lose, husband, wife, and child lose. All she was concerned with was the dough. No father there to guide that child now. And she's going to use that child as a tool. How many times have you heard that narrative? Man, you better protect your sperm. Protect your penis. Protect which woman you put that thing in. Stop devaluing yourself. Kings... Kings used to wait seven, eight years. They had women the three years of bathing and talking all kinds of before they would even touch her. Nah, nah, I'm not touching you. You got you got about you got a, a good 36 months before you can even come in my inner chambers for me to even talk with you. Nah, you're not no, you're not even worthy to come in my presence. You're not, yeah, you're not even worthy to come in my presence. You know? Go bathe for three years before we talk. Hey! Okay, play that Steve Harvey. Let me tell you some Steve Harvey. Ah, oh, I ain't gonna say it. Let's go. Let's play, let's play him. See, these dudes kill me. That's what's wrong with this generation today. These young boys today, what do she bring to the table? The hell you mean, man? What do your ass bring to the table? You got a woman that can come to the table that can make another you. What else she need to slide up to the table with? What about your job? What happened to men who were supposed to be responsible? Do you know that it's our job to take care of a woman and some children to have a family? That's our damn job. You know what to do. Hit hold on. Subscribe. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I happen to agree. Oh, man, you need to work, you bum. You can't be 
You can't be the man of the house and try to put down law and you don't work, you don't maintain your house. And you might have a wife that make, make more money than you, but damn, if you can't take care of yourself, sisters, why would you take him? He can't take care of himself. Man, y'all stupid. I happen to agree with that. But where he lost me that is what does she bring to the table? She don't got to bring nothing other than open her legs and making a baby. Evidently, you didn't read Proverbs 31. You don't know the whole... Women wear a lot of hats. Let's go there real quick, just in case people online don't understand. All she got to do is lay on her back. Subscribe button and become a... That dude has made his career uh, uh, appeasing to women. He, that, he's simple. That's his whole career simping. That's why his daughter right now, yo, that girl got that girl is getting run through. Lord, man. Yeah, I know that. That's her, her father's a drug dealer. They went to jail. Her mother's a, a never. That girl, I'm telling you right now, I would I would love to have a conversation with her OBGYN. I did. He he got work when he go when she go for a checkup. That dude got work. He got to go all the way over there, Damn. and then all the way on that side, and uh, and uh, eh. somebody hold my legs. I don't fall in. Shit. Imagine her pap smell. Lord Jesus, boy. Oh Lord, that thing. That, you know, you talking about a great Gulf fix? She. They knocked the lining out of her backside. All right. That was too much, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And somebody thinks, you know, who? And then here's the thing: the dude now with her, he thinks she's a prize because she looked good. I'm telling you, I don't know what's wrong with men. Men is crazy. I just don't get it. You kiss. I don't understand you. And you walk and you be proud and spend your money like you kind of prize. Listen, dude, you are not. Her, she's you, dummy. If that's over your head, then it's just over your head. This they think new they, they, he, he think he bagged her. No, nigga, she bagged you. This new generation today, Bishop, they have this mindset, it's an honor to marry to a hoe. What is what? Hey, listen, I... She's not even marrying these dudes. That's what I'm saying. She's a it's man like either. an honor for them to, to be a one a hoe. Hey. Listen, when, back then... It, listen, men was like, hey, stay the hell up. Yeah. Hey, 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 Deacon, there's a brother in the NBA named Jordan Poole. He just had a date. You heard of the, the rapper's sister, Ice Spice. He spent on her a date $500,000 to take her out on a date. Do, do on a date. A freaking date. Hey, I'm telling you, what, yeah. what, what you women got, boy, is strong. You make a man go bankrupt. $500,000 for a date. I, okay, all right, you just lost me. Okay, wh why, we, why we here again, Proverbs 31? Oh, God, why, why was it Proverbs 31? I wasn't talking about Proverbs 31 before. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, watch this. I, I, just real quick. Her price far above rubies. Where is that at? Uh, verse 10. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above ruby. So don't again, don't mean a woman don't got no value. You got a woman that got value, but these are the prerequisites that she must have. Watch this. Uh, verse 27. Verse 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. And eat what? Not the bread of idleness. And eat not the bread of idleness. Uh, jump on down to verse 14. Verse 14, she is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She bringeth her food from afar. Verse 28. Verse 28, her children arise up. Her children wakes up. And call her blessed. Her children wake up. And listen, ladies, I'm, I'm going to try to peep you on something right now. You mamas out here, pay attention to what you're about to read. One verse. This Proverbs 31. Read it again. Her children arise up. So what does that mean? Her children will wake up, and they would what? And call her blessed. And they will call her blessed. Read on. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. And her husband also, he would what? Praiseth no, her. No, no, no. He would what? 
Read the verse. Her children arise up. Her children rise up. And call her blessed. Read on. Her husband also. Stop. Her husband also what? Rise up. Read on. And praises her. And praises her. So what does that tell you? That woman's already up. She's already up for them to say blessed. Damn, mom, you up already? Damn, my, look, my wife was up. She got breakfast done. She got the house together. You wouldn't be up here on TikTok or whatever you're doing, sleeping at 12 noon. House be disarranged. That's your job. Well, it's too much. Well, that's what God gave you, damn it. That's the job God gave you. Now, nah, man, don't go too far now. Your job, I'm, I try to be fair because it is, it ain't easy. But nobody won't hear no complaining because I don't complain when I got to go to work. Ain't nobody got to wake me up to go to work. I go to work. You got to wake me up. I'm a man. Handle my business. So don't talk about no dishes. I don't want to hear about no dishes. Thank God that you got dishes to wash. That means there was food in that dish and I put it in the house. So wash that thing. Don't tell me I'm going to hear about no, no dishes. You got to be pleased. Let me dudes be coming home from work. Your wife got you doing dishes too. Now you do dishes because you want to help her, not because she tells you, oh, I need help. Man, listen, I need help. Go, 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 go carry this axe and go dig this ditch for me. Maybe, maybe she's going to cry. Well, she's she going to be upset. She gonna, so I cry. Here, let me, let me, let me, here's a glass of water so you don't get dehydrated. Well, I could cry. You worry about her. You worry about her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they rise up and call her blessed. Why? Because she does not eat the bread of idleness. This, this simp is saying all she got to do is give you babies. That's not what the Bible just said. Let's go back to the class. Okay. Uh, the, the foundation of earth is out of course. Isaiah 3 and 12. What time is it? What time does it start? Okay, I got some time. Uh, huh? Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, uh, Isaiah, I'm going to start running through this right now. Isaiah 3 and 12. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. It says, as for my people, children, <coughs> I apologize, children are their oppressors, and what? And women rule over them. And women, children are our oppressors, and women, why is that? I'm trying to understand. How is that happening? How are children our oppressors? Our oppressors and women rule over them. Isaiah 51. This is how. Let's read. Isaiah 51 and 20. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. Look what it says. Thy sons have fainted. They, ha they lie at the head of the streets. As a wild bull in a net, they are full of the fury of the Lord. They're full of what? The fury of the Lord. They're full of the fury of the Lord. Read on. The rebuke of thy God. Now, wait a second. We just read, thy children are thy oppressors, and women shall rule over them. Now I came here, and it said that our oh, what? Our oh, sons have fainted. They, they lie in the head of the streets. That means our oh, sons be on them corners, hanging out. It's prophetic. Now, what the guy to do with the women? What does she do wrong? Here we go. Jump up to verse 17. Verse 17. Tell me, tell me if you all understand this. Awake, awake. Stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord, the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. There is none to guide her. Stop. There's none to guide her. Who's the her? Jerusalem. It's referring to in the feminine form. All right? There's none to guide her. Read on. Among all the sons whom she hath brought forth, neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought up. So all the sons that came out of Jerusalem, now remember, this is an allegory. It's referring to as a woman. So this woman has a bunch of sons and none to guide her. Where's the man at? Where's the, where's the lead at? God was our, our, our husband, right? He departed from us. So now she's what? She's a single woman with a bunch of children, a bunch of sons, and none to guide her. Read on. 
these two things are come upon thee. Mm -hmm. Who shall be sorry for thee? Well, who's going to be sorry for thee? Because you forsook God. So you forsook your husband. Well, who's going to be with you? I got a divorce. I'm happy. Okay, cool. We don't. Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? And who's going to be the comfort? Who's a covert for you women? We just read that. It's us. We are protection. Us as a nation, God is our protection. So the analogy is God has turned his back on us. And Jerusalem, which is her, has a bunch of sons. Now let me ask you sisters who have children. You know them young boys grew up one day, right? You know, I grew up and I had my father and my mother in the house. And I grew up to a certain age where my mama beatings didn't really matter. I take them things like it was nothing. That thing was nothing. I, <laughs> it, it, was, it was almost comical. I'm like, I look at my mother, I'm like, the way you swing it, you're going to hurt yourself. Because <laughs> this shit don't hurt me. But the, but, but, but the one that was when Pops came, that was it, was, it was, it was a different type of ass whipping coming there. You may not come out of this one unscathed. You understand that? No, read on. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. Thy sons have fainted. Thy sons have fainted. Thy sons have fainted. Boy slaps. Thy sons have fainted. Read on. They lie at the head of the streets. Uh, as a wild bull in a net. They're wild. You can't control them. So what's the purpose of having a man in the house? Jerusalem fell because there was no hedge to protect her. We are the value to keep the house together or the little Negroes will be on the corner. Watch this. Watch it. Bobby! Bobby, wake up! Stop smacking your mother like Bobby! All right. Where is the father at? Where does that child learn violence like that? What has he experienced in his life? Those are those sons without a father. Now, mind you, sometimes. Fathers pass away, I understand that. But I'm talking about us right here, and this truth known this. Without a man in the house, man, it is very hard to discipline boys. It is very hard. They get to a certain age. They need fathers, figures around them. They need a father in their house, to be, to be exact. Real quick, give me um, boy still cars. Still car. I want, you to, I want you to do just in the order that you got it. It's from beginning to 105, jump to 238, jump to 10, 33, and then jump to 1120. Watch this. Look at the story of Latron. Latron, what is his name again? I'll play it. This is his life from 2008 to 18. Latarian Milton is not your typical seven-year-old. Few his age have ever driven an SUV up and down several busy streets. It all started at his mother's townhouse. Latarian says he took the car keys and hopped into his grandmother's Dodge Durango. When I came through the back door, I looked on the counter, my keys were gone. I took my grandma's car because I got mad at my mom, and then I suddenly had my friend come in, and he smoked with cigarettes. He started the vehicle and Seven put years it old, into smoke gear. Now, I yanked the, I yanked it. I yanked the um, thing. And off they went. Two seven-year-olds alone on the road. Latarian drove several miles through Lake Park in Palm Beach Garden. Along the way, he ran over two mailboxes, hit two parked cars in a Costco parking lot, and struck two moving cars near Walmart. I want to do it because it's fun. It's fun to do bad things and drive into a car. But did you know that you could perhaps kill somebody? Yes, but I wanted to do hood rat stuff with my friend. The SUV. <laughs> I'm sorry. Man, look. He said, I want to do hood rat stuff with my friends. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? You know what struck me when I saw that for the first time? Was he drove and he was all over wherever he's at. I'm trying to think of my child at seven years old. How the hell you got away? I know where you, you're in the house. I 
out of you in the yard. How does a seven-year-old get all the way? That grandmama ratchet, the mama ratchet, that whole generation is a gener a curse of ratchet people. That this boy, now mind you, I get it, some people sneaky, but at seven years old, he's far beyond his years of living. He's been exposed to too much to be that slick. There's no parenting that's been going on from mama or daddy, whoever the father is at, whatever. But that boy got issues. But you know what? Everybody make a mistake. All of us bad when we was kids. Wait, we're going to get to in a second. Yeah, watch this. Uh, go to 238. 238 to 310. Truck, and I'm sorry what I did to all you people in the hospital. And I love you, and I hope you be in prayer. But then there's his wild side. Can I leave now? But on Monday, Lotarian took his bad boy image to a new level inside this Lake Park Walmart. The problem began when Lotarian asked his grandmother to buy him some chicken wings. She said no. He got mad, walked over, and ordered them anyway. When his grandmother confronted him about it, Lotarian snapped. This started hitting me. Okay, so that's what, this is the same little kids a few years later. You know, he, 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 the dude was a car thief. Now he's an abuser because he could. He a cute little kid. He a little abuser because, guess what? He can't get chicken wings. Do you see the progression of his life where the thing is going? Do you think the story is going to end good for this boy? Let's go on now. Let's go on. Ten oh eight. Yeah. He's doing well in school. Look, he got all bigger A's now. And B's. <laughs> Oh, he graduated. He got himself it's together. It's graduation day at JFK Middle School in Riviera Beach. Latarian Milton is one of many graduates here who are looking forward to the next challenge. It's going to be good when I get to school and high school because I'll be able to come on the football Stop. team. Stop. You see that picture right there? That's the picture you'd be seeing in the grandmama house. And when, a when, it, when, it, when, it, when he when he's dead, that's the picture they show you. Yeah. But that ain't the person that you saw in the corners, that little bull. That the one. Get play it. Have some good success there. Be able to graduate from there to go to college. We first met Latarian no. in 2000. Yeah, that's good. I don't need no more. Now let's go to 1120. Now this is over a 10 year period. We watch him grow up. 1120. 12 20. Engineering and technology. <laughs> That's right, and Latarian Milton spent about 10 minutes in court this morning. He learned that he will not be able to go home anytime soon. He will have to wait to hear from the judge the next court date. We last spoke with Latarian Milton in 2015. He had just completed middle school and was looking forward to the next step. This is Milton entering a West Palm Beach courtroom Monday to face charges stemming from an armed robbery and carjacking. Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputies say a Lyft driver picked up four young males and a female early Sunday morning. Investigators say the suspects told the driver to take them to another location. When the driver refused, authorities say one of the suspects pulled out a handgun and hit the driver in the back of the head. The driver says he got out of the car and was robbed of his wallet and jacket. He later told deputies that Milton, who was in the front passenger seat, got out and hopped into the driver's seat and sped away with the other suspects. According to investigators, right, the driver know. gave detectives a phone number. With so he went from still in his grandmother's car and joyriding so 10 years later now, that dude is doing carjackings and bopping people over the head. Where's the daddy at? Let's go back and read Isaiah 51. I want 17 right on down to 20. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 17. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord, the cup of his fury. Thou has drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she hath brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought up. All the sons that this woman would have brought up, there's none there. Where? There's no man leading the house. This is all an allegory of Jerusalem without God. Read on. These two things are come upon thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction. Destruction and desolation come when there's no hedge, no man to protect. Read on. And the famine and the sword, by whom shall I comfort thee? Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. The sons have fainted. 
And now they're out on the head of the corners. Read on. As a wild bull in a net. That Why? Because there's no man there. There's no man there. Read on. They are full of the fury of the Lord. I want dad disciplined son. And it says, and it says, the last part of it says, the, uh, rebu the rebuke of the, the rebuke of thy God. Right. It says, thy, they are full of fury of the Lord. Now watch this. This is what happens when you have a father in the house. Let's take a pull up. Whoever want to fight, while y'all bullshitting, pull y'all tough ass up. I guarantee you, I would beat the shit out. Hey, I don't want y'all. Pull up. I'm on it. I said, Damon, snake shit at him. Do it. Just for that. Now, come help. Come help. That's what he's saying. Come on, quit playing with me. Come Pause help. It. People look at it like, all right, why'd he smack him? Because his son had a pistol. And his, and, he, and his friends his friends is egging him on with this pistol stuff. He said, those are your friends, right? All right. Smack the shit out of him. Say, now you all come help him. If you his boys, you come save him for me. Come save him for me. People might think that's abuse. He's trying to save that boy. If, because that smack is easy. I don't know if anybody's been shot before. But you take that smack before a gunshot. Mama can't do that. That's where father comes in. Read. I mean, read. Play. These type of kids gonna get you fucked up. That's what I'm saying. These your friends, though. Your friend will get your ass beat. If you ever in your fucking life listen to one of them and raise your hand to me, bitch, I will bury you. And bury they dust asses, too. Don't fucking play with me, David. This type of shit I'm talking about. These little boys and these little girls gonna get the shit beat out of you, boy. Play with me if you want to. You better choose your motherfucking friends wisely. Because right now, you bullshit, nigga. Stop. Now for men. You know what you know what that's it. You know what that is, right? When you point like that? Not a gun. You know what it is? He's provoke him. Jump if you think you bad. That's what men do. Jump. Let's let's see. Turn your head. Stiff your neck up. Keep that fucking. <laughs> sorry. Stop, stop, don't. Rude. I'm sorry. No, just hey. keep keep that neck loose. Don't you ever tighten up that neck. If I snap that shit off your Nah, nah. Sugar, honey, ice. Nah. I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. I got in a moment right there. Because I know if you ever tighten your neck up, I'm going to break. Ain't a woman could do that. You trying to hey. save that boy. Play. Bishop, real quick. Can, <laughs> can I get a scripture real quick? Phil, go ahead. Let's, let's, let's go back. Hey, real quick. Sirach 42 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 42, verse 1. Because Bishop made a great point. He's trying to save that young man's life. And some you save with compassion, and others you save with fear. You got to put the fear of God into these young kids, man. Because they could Google any answer that they want, so they think they know a lot. But you don't know the fury of God because your parents have been trying to protect you from God's judgment by ordering your steps aright. So read that, verse 1. Sirach chapter 42 and verse 1. Read. Of these things, be not thou ashamed, uh -huh. and accept no person to sin thereby. So don't be ashamed because a father will do that, and it seems extreme to some. But sometimes the mother will try to coddle the child. Like, you're being too rough on them. You're being too, you're, this is too much. There's never too much when it's time to save that life. Let's go. There's no such thing as too much. Now, hey, Joe, a second. Yes, what you sir. said is, I don't mean to cut you, but what you said is so true. I recently experienced that when my son was dealing with him. My wife in the middle of me dealing with said, no, no, babe. After I was finished, I said, don't you ever do that to right. me. Don't you ever, what do you do? I'm dealing with my son. Don't you ever. Try to stop me in the middle of what I'm doing right now. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Before me and you got a problem now. Roar. You see me trying to discipline this boy, getting this, and you, oh, you plant, nah, you make him a jelly sandwich. Nah, don't come in with that. Food. Jelly. No peanut butter. Just hey. jelly. Hey, your brothers, these go back to, to, believe it or not, these go back to Genesis. When God gave Adam water power, 
Your brothers understand something. You got all the power to save that kid life. Don't ever let your wife take on about you talk too rough. Listen, listen, woman, stay the hell away from when I'm dealing with my son, stay the hell away from me. All right, all right. Because listen, I'm telling you, especially boys, don't sleep in these boys, man. All right. Don't sleep in them. And your sisters, just be quiet. I'm talking about, oh, you talk too rough for them. Shut up. You're gonna, how are you going to tell me how to deal with my son? What right. the hell's wrong with you, woman? Just stay the hell away from that conversation. And your brothers, who's going to marry sisters with boys, make sure she give you 100% full control over that boys. If she don't want to do it, do not marry her. I'm telling right. you straight. Right. Do not marry her. You have to have full control over those boys. Because you will, that's how you're going to save their lives. So, verse one again, real quick, real quick, read it quick. Verse one, of these things be not thou ashamed. So, don't be ashamed of the things that are mentioned as the chapter goes on. Jump to verse uh, five. Verse five, and of merchants in different selling, uh -huh. of much correction of children. Of what? Of much correction of children. There should be no shame in your game when it comes to the correction of your children. None whatsoever. Because that is how you're going to save them. Listen, what, there's a spare the rod, what? Spoil the child. So sometimes you got to save these kids with that rod. Because sometimes, listen, if you, don't, if you don't fear it, you're going to feel it. And I'd rather you feel it by the hand of your, 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 your parents, your father who loves you and wants the best for you, rather than God's wrath come upon you. So you pick, you pick, you choose. And, and God wrath coming upon you could be in a form of Tay Tay in prison, giving you a liver shot, making you br him sit between your legs and you braiding his hair. Go ahead. And Daddy can't save you there. Get yeah, finish playing that. Been tear them. Your dad not the nigga to play with. I will bury them fucking bitches. I don't care about killing no fucking kids. You better tell them before they kill you or before they hurt you. I'll do it. And see them folks quit motherfucking playing. This shit ain't no motherfucking joke. Fuck wrong with y'all kids. Don't get mad because y'all dust ass parents don't love y'all like I love mine. <laughs> now what? Y'all know where he is. Pull up. Help. Come save. Since y'all can <laughs> Yes, fact. I um, I did so much. I okay. Let's lamentations. I may have to finish this class life last another time. I never finish my class. I always say that I never go back to them. So I've been saying that for years. Oh, next week I, I never finish. And this moment will pass. Lamentations four. Watch this. Four, four and three. Lamentations chapter four. No, and start with verse one. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 1. No, I'm, doing, I'm sorry. Verse 3. Lamentations 4 and verse 3. Even the sea monsters draw out, of, out the breast. They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people is become cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness. It says, guess what? This woman has become cruel with her children. Why? Why? Jump back up. Verse 1 and 2. Verse 1. Uh, verse 2. Verse 2. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers? You know why? Because we are esteemed as earthen pitchers. We're not valued. You don't see no value in us. This world sees no value in us. And because you don't see value in us, you all have become hateful mothers. That's why the Bible says, give me Titus 2. You can never parent your children properly until you see the man that you let insert inside of you and lay his seed as gold. You don't see us like that. You become a problem, not just for yourself, but for your children. That's why it says in Titus, what it says about, um, you know I'm talking about, Titus 2, uh, how to love their children. What verse is that? Titus chapter 2, verse 3. I'm not there. Let me get there with you. I, again. Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. 
the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, you know. that they may teach the young women, that they may teach the young women what? To be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. The aged woman is supposed to teach the younger women how to love their husbands, how to love their children. When I read that, you know what strikes me about that? Is that God is telling the woman, listen, we need you older women to teach your, these young women how to love a man, how to love their children. Read Proverbs 31, learn how to, how to mimic that. And I'm saying this for today, in this day. Because a lot of these age women out here in the world, yo, I'm watching them, these women is gray hair, my age, and they twerking. How many, how many men do you see my age out there half naked on TikTok? They don't do that stuff. This is when they be competing with their daughters. It be I saw a mother, her daughter, and her granddaughter. They always twerking. Three generations of twerkers. That stuff is broken in your mind. That you're trying to go to club with your daughter. She don't have no man no more. So now you're trying to hang out and still you're still trying to have another hot girl decade. You had that shit back in the 80s. That freak nick. <laughs> you, you, you come on, man. Come on there. You, let me stop. You see, you almost pull me down that rabbit hole. No, I'm not doing it. But the point is to teach them, read on. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chase, keepers at home. Keepers at home. Go back. I don't want to, because Cap almost pulled me someplace. I don't want to do that. Uh, so we said, so uh, verse two, uh, verse three, four and three. Limitations, chapter yeah. four and verse three. Even the sea monsters draw out the breasts. They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people is become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. They've become cruel, just like the man who was once gold is now esteemed as nothing. Y'all can't esteem us as nothing. And expect to have a good turn in your life. You can't esteem us as nothing and think you're going to raise these kids right. You have to see the value that we bring. Watch this real quick. Jump on down to chapter. I want verse 16. Verse 16. The anger of the Lord hath divided them. The anger of the Lord hath divided the man and woman. Read on. He will no more regard them. They respected not the persons of the priests. They favored not the elders. Read on. As, of, as for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. Because as for yet, our eyes have failed for our vain help. Today, the woman's like, well, I'll take you to court. I'll get 17.5%. I'll get EBT. I'll get this. I'll, you know what? You fa our eyes fail for That help doesn't help you. The help you need is you need a man that is comparable to fine gold. That's what you need. And you have to see him as that. And treat him as that. You want a happy life? It's not a happy wife. It's a happy husband. Read on. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Because you're too busy watching for the white man to give you social services. That's Satan. That's part of his devices. We're going to put the woman over the man. Don't worry. If he ain't around, we give you some social services. But you know, there was a time that you all needed us for everything. And that's when you respected us. And again, I ain't talking about them bum men. Because you got some niggas bums. That's when you put value on us. And they understood that. You know, we got to get the black men out the house, give them no jobs, give the woman a little career, give them a little EBT, a little WIC, Similac, you know. They give you all. They give you all the tools for you to keep on having babies. Okay, you have babies. We'll give you some free diapers and some free pampers and some free Similac. We even give you a little cell phone. Take all that stuff away. Y'all start listening, because you ain't gonna stop having sex. When you have, when you have nowhere to go but to us, you are gonna start listening. God said, "Y'all gonna come back when judgment start coming to earth. You gonna start looking to, you know, let me listen to this man. Hope you do it sooner than later." Read. They hunt our steps. 
that we cannot go into our streets. Do you understand the battle that we have? They hunt our steps that we can't even go into the streets. Jump up to chapter 5, verse 9. Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 9. We get our bread with the peril of our, of our lives. Do you understand that we get our bread with the peril? Every time we walk out the house, we don't know if the cops going to kill us, if we're going to get robbed. Do you understand the white man hunt on steps every time? When we come home, y'all should be prostrated, laying down and worshiping, thanking God that we made it home. Did you, did, you, did you get direct deposit, my Lord? Yes, baby. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. We could pay the bills. Praise God for you. They hunt all steps. What it says in verse 9? We got our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. For us to even get a paycheck out there, we take a risk going out to work every day to provide for you. Jump up to verse 3. Verse 3. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. It says we are orphans and fatherless. Many of women, many of children out here don't have no parents. Some women, some of these children out here don't have no fathers. They're fathers, single mothers. Some of you women are widows without a man. That is unseen. Now, if your husband passed away, that's something different. But we shouldn't have fatherless children. We got to correct that narrative. And again, women, put value in yourself because if you let the man sleep with you and then you don't respect him, it says a lot about you, who you are. You sleep with anything? Sleep with any man? We got to rewrite that history or that narrative in our community. Stop that vicious cycle. How many times you men got to keep on sleeping with these wrong women and paying? Y'all some be paying child support. Sometimes I'd be like, damn, how many baby mamas you got? Damn, you working just to pay baby mamas. Well, so, let me stop. All right, so I'm going to stop there right now. I'll finish the class next week. Life lasts or whatever. I try. You know, I ain't never going to get through it. All praises to the most high. All praises. I'm sorry. I got, I got about half. I got about halfway through. Hey, but listen. Bishop Nathaniel's up next. Stay tuned. IUIC TV. As I always say, three times a day, seven days a week, you can get this word. You want to come learn who you are? Come and serve God. We're the Israelites. We are God's chosen. All nations will go underfoot. We just must come back to the commandments. With that, I say shalom.